What's up, Pride Fam? So we're in the gym today. We're gonna do a vlog, but we're also gonna keep it informative. I'm actually gonna take you through my squat workout and talk about the three main cues that I focus on. Now, this is not necessarily something you absolutely need because everyone's very individual with what cues are gonna help them achieve the highest level of technique on the squat. But I wanna take you through my three favorite cues that I'm heavily focused on. Lately, my squats fell out of groove, so we're gonna show you what I'm doing to fix it. We're also gonna take you through the rest of my SPD workout, the squat, bench, and deadlift today, as well as some full body accessory work. And we're gonna show you everything I'm doing, starting off here with the squat. Okay, warming up some squats now. I always start with a full body warm up, just getting a lot of blood flow, especially when it's cold outside. And then after that, I'm gonna get straight to my cueing, really working on the mechanics and technical needs that I have to implement before I get to my heavy top sets. I've noticed a lot of people don't take their warm up serious enough. So what I'm doing is implementing these cues right away. And the first one we're gonna talk about is three points of contact on the foot, the heel, the big toe, and the lateral aspect of the foot which I have a whole video on. But put briefly, my main goal here is to get even force transfer, and for me, more quad drive and toe pressure than I normally get. What I deal with in my squat is a lot of overextension and posterior dominance. I'm very heel and I'm very back dominant when I squat. I'm trying to get on my toes some more and feel some quad pressure and really grip my feet to the ground and get nice even foot pressure and force transfer. The way to think about this is if I need to push a heavy object, whether I use a finger or a whole hand is gonna dictate how much force I can transfer into that object. Obviously, because there's very little surface contact here, if I go to push something heavy with just a finger, I can't push it as well as if I use my entire hand. Same thing when we squat, we want the entire foot pressured into the ground, tension distributed evenly. So for me, I'm trying to get off my heels and more onto the toes. For you guys at home, it may be the complete opposite. You may need to get a little bit more heel savvy in your squat. So you're gonna warm up a set and focus on that. First thing I really do when I walk this out is I try to get my feet planted and turned out exactly how I want my stance. And then from there, I go onto my heels and lift my toes up into the air. And then I clamp my feet back down and I create all three points of contact. And then I very smoothly squat on top of that, feeling all that pressure and tension going into the earth. Normally when I squat, I tend to shift back this way too much. My little toe lips coming up. I'm trying to get more forward tension into those toes, get that heel very even with the toes, and then squat on top. So I'm gonna do some reps, really warming this up. I like your little beanie. And the nice new highlights in the hair. What are you hitting? Don't be shy. Oh, I'm asking what you hitting, bro? What you hitting on the squat? I don't know. I have four at seven. Feels okay. heavy, though. Feels heavy? We're going to make it happen. Okay, guys. 
guys, so got all the way up to my top set, hit 540 pounds for a set of five, which is a lifetime PR, which is amazing because today I told myself I wasn't gonna focus too much on weight, but they're feeling great with the cueing I was doing. So words on the, the feet grounding. Now, moving on to cue number two that I really like to focus on is with my bracing. I'm an athlete that tends to be really overextended. So I tend to arch my low back out. I'm always in interior pelvic tilt. And it's not that this is necessarily a bad thing. That is just my natural strength dominance. Some people bias flexion a little, other people bias extension. I tend to bias extension. Now the thing here is I don't want to abuse this movement pattern. So I like to use a lot of cueing to pull me out of this. The two main things I work on is first off, taking my obliques, the top and bottom of the oblique, which they run vertically. And a lot of people think the obliques just rotate. These really are actually fibers that run vertically too that help help get your pelvis out of interior pelvic tilt. So I like to think of hugging my upper oblique and lower oblique around the belt and clamping that over. And then the second cue I really work on is exhalation to get my upper abdominals on. Now this is not me flexing over, but rather me exhaling to squeeze my abdominal muscles on. So if you take a look here at my fat stomach when it's all loose and out, I got no ab definition, nothing's looking right. But when I exhale and squeeze those abs on, I get a little bit of ab definition. Now I'm kind of fat right now, so it's not popping through that much. But the idea is I focus on exhalation and squeezing the abs on, and then I brace into that position. So I control the obliques, control the upper abs, and then brace that position to hold everything into place. And then the third cue I'm working on is coming up out of the hole with uh, the path of resistance in mind. So a problem a lot of squatters have is when they squat, they'll get great positioning up top and they'll hold that all the way down and then they'll hit the hole and everything they created on the way down with their abdominal pressure and core bracing, they'll just extend right out of. So it doesn't really matter if your squat is braced on just the way down. If you lose that on the way up, you're not gonna have the carryover you're looking for. So for me, I really like to think, act like a statue out of the hole. So what I mean by that is, the way I go down into the hole, I try to press back up into the path of resistance. It oftentimes feels easier to let my hips slide back, let my position change, let my overextension to come, but I try to hold all that and push into the path of resistance and act like a statue. So those are the three cues. I'm focusing on my squat, doing all this on my back downs. Now, the thing with the overextension is very difficult to get on my top set. Wasn't that successful with it, and that's okay because that is my strongest position. I'm not looking to have picture perfect reps every single time I go heavy. The goal is more to make 90% of my reps look good. So all my back down sets, all my warm up sets, I exaggerate this cueing, and then you kind of get into this middle ground where I'm training in the position that I'm strongest in, but not overusing it and making it worse over time. Come on. Beautiful. Other than that damn bar rolling everywhere, that looked clean. Okay, warming up deadlifts and bench press together. It's a little time crunch is what I do on SVD days sometimes. So uh, I'm going like step to step between the both of them. On deadlifts, I'm really focused on just position, locking my low back in independently of my upper back. So I pull with a flex kind of protracted upper back, but a very extended low back. That way my lockout's really strong. Focusing on that on my warm-ups and not really trying to heave weight too much on those. The goal of the top set today for set of five is about 620 pounds, somewhere around there. And then I got the same thing going on bench press here, sets of five, really focusing on overload on these. My bench movement feels locked in, so today is all about moving weight for this movement, try to hit a big PR. And as long as I can do that, that's a good sign.
One more. Okay. Okay, so deadlift top set went pretty good. Grip was giving out a little bit, but he hit 622 pounds for a set of five. That's a huge lifetime PR. I think that's like a 30 pound PR or something. It's crazy. Deadlift feels really locked in. That would have been actually even easier if it weren't for two things. One, had my belt too tight. So I actually wear my belt usually a notch tighter on squats than I do on deadlifts. Today I was kind of in between sizes, so I opted for the tighter size. Bad call, my low back could not get into the position I wanted. But more importantly, my grip was giving. So what people don't understand is about deadlift bar, even though the bar is skinnier, is technically easier to grip because of the diameter. However, it bends more, it oscillates in your hands, it literally whips your hands open. So it's way harder, in my opinion, to grip on the deadlift bar than it is a stiff bar I rarely have grip issues. So uh, on that attempt, on my fourth and fifth rep, my grip started opening, slowed down the weight, but still clean RP, eight, eight and a half, I would say, which was the goal for today. Now moving on to my bench top set, and then we got some accessory work after. Say hi to the, the Prime fam. Hey, Prime fam. What are you doing right now? How much is this? What? <laughs> Do the math. Uh, <laughs> oh, put me on the spot. I didn't graduate It's high a school. blue. It's a blue. It's a 132. Yeah. AKA 60 kilos. Let's get it. It's not poverty. Come on. Let's go. She looks so cute in her little beanie. I can't pull off beanies like that. I just look homeless if I do it. Big legs, big scap, lots of control. Okay, we got a block that we're adding to the bench. So after that top set for set of five at RP8, now I got a triple at the same RPE. It's actually eight and a half for both of them. Uh, and I'm going with a two board press. So this block is basically mimicking board presses without someone having to hold a board on me, which makes it heavily inconsistent unless I'm training with the same people all the time. Now the whole idea here is for just a little bit of extra overload, holding a weight that's heavier in my hands I'm not really used to, working on lockout a little bit, but it's, it's more so for like a mental and physical barrier break to get me used to really heavy weights and training. And I do this in a state of fatigue, which has got a lot of carry over to feeling ready on the meet, uh, on meet day on the platform because there's a lot of times where you're rushing through your attempts, maybe you didn't warm up enough time, shit goes haywire on meet day. So it's like, I like practicing really heavy loads in a state of fatigue. This is something Dylan, the guy who gives me an objective eye on my coaching, he uh, kind of recommended I throw this in on top of my bench work. So I'm gonna do that. Then we got some back downs after. That's cool. Clean, clean ass paws. Let's go. Okay, so did my back downs for bench. 
really focusing on getting scap retraction, actively engaging on the eccentric. I'm um, not gonna lie though, the reps just weren't the best. That's what I was focusing on, didn't execute the best. I'm tired, SVD days are hard. So finished up with bench, had 319 for sets of five on the back downs, and then moved on to accessory work, had rows. Supposed to do overhead press today, but I did dumbbell overhead press. Shoulders and pecs are a little tight from all the benching volume. If you guys are on the power program, you know, tons and tons of pressing volume. So opted for dumbbell overhead press just to keep it a little bit more joint friendly, everything a little bit more stacked. That's pretty much everything with today's training. Just want to take you guys through an informative vlog, keep everything about learning and entertainment. Give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Comment down below. I need to go eat, I can't even think anymore. I'm tired. See you guys in the next video. Do it again, please just wait by. Let me see that shirt though. Some real merch coming soon. That's the old, old, you're gonna get that new shit.